Hey girl, welcome to On My Mark, your weekly transformational podcast designed to motivate, empower and inspire to aspire. Yes, in that order. I am your host, Ravimbo C, and I'm a speaker by passion, philanthropist by purpose and a Zimbabwean by tradition. I want to let you in on a little secret. This isn't your typical motivational podcast. This right here is transformational. So join me every Tuesday for your weekly dosage of inspiration. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome. I am back with the second episode of Own My Mark. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to your transformation season. No, but what you really need to do is make sure you listen to episode one. Because that's where we set the foundation of owning your mark, you know turning that potential energy into kinetic energy of behavior that transforms your life you see this is why you really gotta go listen to episode one because you know what they say you're only as solid as what you build on let's get started at the beginning of a race there's a three command start on your mark get set go but in this season of transformation we say own your mark, get set, go. We've already set the basis of owning your mark, remember, in episode one, by identifying that the key is in the doing. Now, it's time to get set. Note to self. Uh huh, write this down. It is the preparation you did from yesterday that will be the momentum that carries you forward. When you hear the words, get set, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Because for me, get set means get ready, get prepared, something, something is about to go down. In this episode, we are looking at the importance of being ready, being set, you know, being prepared. People have big plans, big dreams, big aspirations, but they're not even prepared for where they want to go. See, you cannot afford to live a reactive life. You got to be proactive. You got to be intentional. John C. Maxwell said, I believe that everyone chooses how to approach life. If you're proactive, you focus on preparing. If you're reactive you end up focusing on repairing. So, looking at your own life right now, have you been doing more repairing than preparing lately? How much preparation are you actually putting into your desired goals, your aspirations, your plans? I was having a chat with my friend the other day. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at one of my friends. Before they start saying, now that I have a podcast, I want to be putting people on blast. But anyways, my friend was telling me that she's planning on opening a hair shop. So I was like, yay, wow, girl, yes, amazing, fantastic. You know, I I was like, so are you prepared? Are you ready? And she's like, yeah, pretty much. I'm just waiting until I get a bit of money, then I'm going to start. So I was like, oh, okay, so, you know, you've got your business plan and everything set. She said, no, not really, but I know what I want to do. I'm just going to see how it goes. Hmm. So I was like, have you researched your competitors? She said, no. Uh, Have you done any marketing research? Like, you know, how are you going to market your products, your business? Uh, Have you looked at demographics to say which products will be more marketable for your client base she's like no not really um i haven't really looked at all of that i'm just gonna start and you know see how it goes i said girl i don't know what hair shop you're planning on opening and successfully running but you gotta set yourself up from now Because when the opportunity presents itself, you better be ready to acquire the position. You see, everybody has two bases of operation that shape the direction in which their life goes. 
proactive mode versus reactive mode. If you're proactive, you're in control. You use your time, your energy, imagination, and creativity to plan and solve strategically. Reactive, on the other hand, is like when life happens to you. It's when the conditions around you basically dictate how you need to live and how you spend your time. Pro is before, reaction is after. But the thing is, everybody thinks they're in control. But are you? Are you a strategic thinker? Do you think and act before you have to? Before you are forced to take up a defensive or a reactive position? Strategy is a military term that describes operations or movements in a war or a battle. When you go into a battle, you plan your execution by eliminating problems before they occur, right? At times, having that strategic perspective to life helps to develop that, you know, competitive mindset that then allows you to develop a range of approaches to how you're going to deal with the challenges, the obstacles that comes to your life because we all know that the challenges are going to come. So stop waiting for situations to happen before you decide on what you're going to do in that moment. You don't wait until you arrive in an interview room before you prepare for the interview. Nah. But let's bring the focus back to you for a second. Today is a new day. What have you planned for today? Did you wake up with a plan or you just woke up ready to see what the day will bring to you? Let's start from there. A plan is like your detailed proposal. What is your detailed proposal for today? What are you planning in your 24 hours? Okay, you, you've planned to wake up and go to work. Fair enough. But apart from that, what else are you doing with your day outside of work? What about that idea you've been thinking about? Ah, that driving license you've been saying you want to get? That online course you've been saying you want to start? Okay, let's simplify it even further. Have you planned what you're wearing to work tomorrow? Don't let everything in your life be a rush. Don't let everything in your life be last minute. Are you living a rush hour life? I mean, every time you want to be playing catch up? If you're not even making the effort to plan your day, what more your week or your year? See, unplanned daily living will accumulate to an unplanned life. So, I'm going to ask you again. What is your plan for today? Live your life by design, not by default. You see, the Revimba you're witnessing now is a product of all those years and months that I spent reading books, researching content, learning, taking online courses on public speaking, adopting behavior patterns, and all of that. I didn't just wake up last week and said, yeah, I'm going to buy a microphone or I'm going to start a podcast. Yeah, let's go. No, I've been preparing daily for where I was going before I even arrived. That's exactly what we're talking about when we say get set. I didn't even know then that I'm going to have a podcast called On My Mark and I'm going to be here with you on this transformation season. But what I did know was if I ever got the opportunity to inspire somebody, I need to be ready. They say success occurs when preparation meets opportunity. Whatever it is you want to achieve, stop preparing for that now. Be seriously intentional about it. I was reading an article on Sweat Elite that said, Usain Bolt trains for 90 minutes in the gym every day doing workouts that gear towards improving his speed and agility. How many minutes in your day do you consciously dedicate to mastering your craft? Like for real, are you living a proactive life or are you just winging it? Ask yourself, 
And then there's the preparation of the mind. You gotta get your mind set right. Now, preparation of the mind is a big one. And I think we're going to need a whole separate episode on adjusting your mindset. But I'm going to just touch on one thing that's going to save you a whole lot of stress. Prepare your mind for when people do not support you. Long story short, yeah. I once had a hair business. And I felt like, oh, this was it for me. My own venture. Oh, my retirement plan. (laughs) Like, yep, I'm all set. But it never quite worked out that way. A few months down the line, the business broke down. I wasn't making enough to make ends meet. So in that moment, I was left with no choice but to shut it down. You see, sometimes what you want may not necessarily be what you need but mm, listen that's a whole episode (laughs) as well on its own so anyways what this experience of having my own business taught me was that sometimes those people that you think will support you push you make noise for you you know they say that your circle is supposed to want it for you if not more as much as they want it for themselves Hmm. Some of those people you will not see. You have to prepare your mind to win, succeed and push without a validation. It doesn't matter how many people are cheering for you, supporting you, screaming your name. When it comes down to crunch time, nobody runs the race for you. Look at athletes and footballers like right now with the COVID guidelines. It doesn't matter whether they're football fans, whether they're fans in the stadium cheering them on or not. When it's time to play, you play to win. When it's time to run, you run to win. When it's time to get set, you step up. Don't worry about who's making noise for you or not. Allow your success to make all the noise that you need. Stop catching feelings every time someone doesn't support you or make noise for you. A great support network is fantastic, yes. But what happens that one time they're not there? Does that take away from you as a person? No. Does that undermine your work? Of course not. When nobody else celebrates you, learn to celebrate yourself. When nobody else compliments you, learn to compliment yourself. It's not up to other people to keep you encouraged. All the encouragement you need comes from the inside. See, the sooner you can adjust your mind and prepare your mind to start thinking in this way, the happier you will be. This is why believing in yourself and your own capabilities is so important because when the room is silent, you must learn to clap for yourself. I have a question. Where you are today, is that in line with where you want to go or is it because you want to earn money? Don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great. What you want, it exists. Don't settle until you get it. Is it possible? Yes. Is it easy? No. In fact, the reason why I always reference a race as a metaphor of life is because nobody said it was going to be easy. The Greek word for race is agon. Or is it agon? Agon. You see, my my, my Greek is is, is not that great. Uh, My my French is better, but my Greek, uh, not so much. (laughs) But the Greek word for race, let's just say agon. Well, A-G-O-N, agon. Agon is where we get our word agony, which means extreme physical or mental suffering. (laughs) Wow. So, you mean to tell me, from the get-go, you already know that in this race of life, you're going to experience some extreme 
challenges, some extreme obstacles, some hurdles, some situationships. But it is your preparation and plan that will determine how well you handle this. Your strength will not come from what you can do. Your strength is going to come from overcoming the things that you once thought you couldn't do. What is that one common challenge that many of us are currently facing right now? Or at least we have faced at one point or another. Fear. Fear of failure. I know I definitely have. But I've learned that failure is nothing more than an opportunity to evaluate what's working and not working your life and adjust it accordingly. But you first need a plan. In fact, failure is not really failure if you're continuously learning from the experience and making the necessary changes on your journey. I don't even call it failure anymore because that word takes like once it takes up residency in your mind you're stuck I don't like that word so I call it growth growth is a part of life if one method of action doesn't work you've gained a new perspective and understanding on how not to do it so one way of overcoming this fear of failure is to look at what's affecting your growth Maybe you give up too easily. This can be down to a number of factors. Lack of self-belief, lack of confidence, determination, or you just don't have a plan. Here's a suggestion. Go back to your whys. Why do you want this? Why is it important to achieve? Why this above all else? Because... Really and truly, what you shouldn't be fearing is failure. What you really should be fearing is being in the exact same place next year as you are today. Join us again next week as we continue to transform and win. Be sure to subscribe on our website on mymark.co for weekly exclusives and giveaways. Until next time, on my mark. Get set, let's go.